All right, so we're with uh, EJ McCoy, co-founder and CEO of Chorby. And so we want to dive a little bit deeper into the story behind Chorby, how it started, what the journey has been like up to this point, and what the future holds for this brand, because there's definitely a bright future, a long, long ways. It's a long ways brand. off, but I think it's definitely a bright future. <laughs> It's a lot of good things. Um, uh, I personally came into the fold working with EJ, actually starting Weed Extinguishers, we'll get that to that in a moment. Um, but most of my adult life in a career has been working with Chorby and then beyond that with White Picket Team now. Um, so I have a lot that I owe to Weed Extinguishers and Chorby and the talent that works there for shaping and molding me. That's just a personal note. We'll see if it turned out well or not later on. You're still a young man. We will see. Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't feel old or I don't feel young. Eh, it doesn't get any better. I have a lot of white hairs because of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, EJ, um, you know, in another video, we talked about Executive Lawn Care's start and you mentioned what is now Chorby today. Mm -hmm. um, so, Chorby, give us the, the background of Chorby's on its third name. And that is actually a good testament to my journey as an entrepreneur. In other words, I don't believe that any entrepreneur has it all figured out. And Chorby is a real testament to that. And really it's three names is a testament to that. And so it really has even goes beyond that. Mm -hmm. I started what is today Chorby when I was 21. I had about 10 customers and I established my first LLC and that was EJ McCoy Enterprises LLC. And because I had been mowing yards for years prior to that, and every year, because I was a 21 year old kid who was all over the place and hated mowing yards you know, in September, but by April, well, I was back to mowing yards because as much as I didn't like mowing yards, it's what I made a living doing. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't find anybody that would pay me the kind of money I could make mowing yards. And so it started, that's the roots of it, lawn mowing as EJ McCoy Enterprises. In those first two years, I literally printed door hangers. That's how I got customers. This is back 2006 to 2008. The door hangers didn't have a company name because I, was, I, I had figured out that I was so ADD <laughs> that I might change the name in three months. And so I stopped putting the name on the door hangers. I was just lawn mowing service. And of course, 21, mm -hmm. I had incorporated EJ McCoy Enterprises. 2008, so two years later is when I started using the name Emerald Lawn and Landscaping, which eventually became Emerald Lawn Care because I learned I didn't love landscaping. I liked the consistency and the recurring nature of lawn mowing. And so we first became Emerald Lawn and Landscaping, Emerald Lawn Care. Well, in 2016, after I had built the business with a business partner at this point, and had brought on a business partner in 2012, but I had built the business to about $3 million, but I had significant labor challenges. I was, you know, I, I was just over 30 years old and I had all of my eggs in one basket, so to speak. And that was in lawn mowing, basically. That was my business. It's bread and butter was lawn mowing. Yes, there was a fertilization and weed control aspect to it. And we did a few little odd and in landscape jobs, but it was all lawn mowing and it was highly dependent on H2B visa, you know, short term mm -hmm. uh, labor that had to be, that had to go through the Department of Labor every single year to get. And so 2006 comes, comes by or comes and I'm not going to get my labor. And I had kind of, excuse me, 2016, I said 2006, didn't I? 2016 comes and I wasn't going to get my mowing labor. And I kind of had anticipated this. And so with those labor challenges, I had a reactionary move and I became weed extinguishers because I was going to focus on fertilization and weed control. And, and you know, who needs to deal with all of these labor challenges? I had not yet matured to the point and understanding that no matter what I do in business, it's going to be dealing with people. Mm -hmm. And so I was being very reactionary thinking I'm being all smart by focusing only on fertilization, weed control, and almost contracting, almost pulling back in a lot of ways. And so from 2016 to 2019, what is today Chorby was actually weed extinguishers focusing on fertilization and weed control. And to a lesser extent, we still mowed yards, but we were really focused on fertilization, weed control. 
And during that time, I kind of grew up. This is my early to mid 30s. And I kind of grew up in, as an entrepreneur and realized I learned and figured out some things about building a team and, and leading that team and developing myself as a leader. I learned that I was going to get really bored really fast <laughs> if I was trying to limit myself to just one service line. And so this vision was, was kind of brought out in this idea that we can have all home services under one brand. Lots of people have tried this. Mm -hmm. This is not a new vision to, to try to have one company name with every home service you can imagine under that. This has been tried, but it's always been undercapitalized. And I thought we were gonna be different. We could be better capitalized and we could expand all of these home services. And 2019, I had gotten into franchising with another business and I really believed in the concept of franchising and that's how we're gonna grow this business and how it's gonna be unique is we're gonna have local franchisees doing plumbing and local franchisees doing pest control and local franchisees doing lawn mowing, but they're all you doing it under one unique brand. Mm -hmm. That was the original idea in 2019 that still by and large plays today. But that's the roots of how Chorby became Chorby. And by the way, I will say this, I am never changing the name again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done changing names. It's very expensive to change a name and to completely shift and change your entire mission as a business. Yeah. We're not going to do that again. Good. I like the name Chorby. It's grown on me. Yeah. Who came up with the name? Josh, my business partner. And I say that. Uh, it's not like he just was like, huh, we should call it Chorby. <laughs> No, we as a team in 20, you were actually, this was, you, you was had like been my here, first week. You had been here for a few months before Chorby became Chorby. And during well, that time. My first week though, we had the meeting of like, this is happening. I was yeah. like, oh, well, all right, cool. And so yeah, it was your first week. But during, from that, through that process, we actually collaborated with our, our leadership team. And so when we were weed extinguishers, we first said, yes, we are going to become, we're going to rebrand and here's the vision, multi-home services and we need to come up with a name a name that is you specifically unique like it needed to be very specific very very specific but not also when i say specific it needed to be unique and specific but it needed to be specific to not one thing mm -hmm. it needed to be specific to us in other words it needed to not be used anywhere else i hope i'm articulating that, that correct sense, yeah it's a given example of like google google exactly yeah. uh, uh, you're building a brand around it, or just a single name amazon mm -hmm. um you, you know, it's not called like Green Oaks Services. You yeah. know, there's lots of Green Oaks all over the place. Yeah. Uh, it's not a bad name, it's just used everywhere. Yeah. Uh, we wanted something very unique. And so the idea was, was everybody bring their names together and let's, let's, let's compile this list. And we compiled this list of somewhere between 50 and 60 names. Hmm. Well, of those 50 or 60 names, my business partner and the co-founder of Chorby, Josh Cahill, had actually worked up a list of about 20 different names. And he did this, what today would be just plugging it into AI. All he did was Google different names. That's all he did. Now, this is prior to AI, and so he couldn't just easily plug it in. He actually had to put some time into going onto Google and just typing in random stuff to come up with random names that Google would spit out. And of course, he would add anything that mm -hmm. was of any value at all onto this list. And his name, out of these 20 names, uh, he, he had gotten like his 20 names, I'd say five of his 20 were like the top five names. Like he had like, mm. he had come up with like the best. And it was just a matter of process of elimination and waiting until one really kind of stuck. And I don't remember exactly like if there was this light bulb moment or this epiphany where it was like, this is the name. But it, within a few weeks or a month of that list being in existence, it quickly became clear that we were mm -hmm. gonna be Chorby. So I remember getting asked a lot early days and people still get asked today, what does the name mean? So it's, it's rooted in chore, chores and hobbies put together. And I'm sure there's some grammatical term for that, but I don't know the name mm -hmm. of what that grammatical term, but it is chores and hobby, chore be, chore be, chores and hobbies. So I have a lot, a lot of people that have said, chores and robot because of the mascot that we had have not had have. we still have I'm it. saying had on purpose <laughs> <laughs> there's some internal struggle there 
a no, lot of people don't the like robot, the robot. The robot is good. It will will absolutely come into play. It just is funny. It's right really now. not used very much, and you say it'll come into play, but it'll have to be brought back to life because it is gradually going away from all of our print, even though I tend to like it. I always wanted to add a hat to it, and um, I've kind of lost the battle with our different design team and such. It'll come back at some point. Yeah. So it's uh, chores and hobbies. That's exactly, yeah. It's that simple. Love it. The, the color scheme. Why blue? Why green? Why white? Well, first off, I love blue. If I have a favorite color, it's blue. Yeah. Various shades of blue. Um, I honestly, it's a good question. It's, so we're at, we're at the five year mark and I don't remember exactly. <clears throat> here's what I know. I know that our, gra our longtime graphic designer that actually helped us create the Weed Extinguishers brand years before and, and um, started working with us on our Emerald Lawn and Landscape web website. Too much Gina? Yeah. Really? Uh, Gina, Gina, oh yeah, she goes way, well, she's worked with us over a decade now. Mm. And uh, she, I believe, is who took the name Chorby and worked with us to develop the mm. coloring and the the brand guidelines. At the same time, I could be saying that wrong. It might I have remember, been somebody else. Well, we might edit all this stuff out, but I remember hearing that there was a different color scheme that was like purple and pink or something that was relating to Chorby initially that okay, came with yeah. like so, the name. So yeah, that came with it. So we paid $500 for Chorby.com and somebody was essentially selling mm, the concept of Chorby.com and they had it all in pink and purple and they had kind of just done like this very, very uh, modest design and, structure. And what they had built, Chores and Hobbies, was a part of? Yes, it was. Interesting. Yeah, okay. that, that was not original to us specifically. Gotcha. Uh, I am, uh, you know, it's my, my mind is coming back. So we used like a 99 designs type mm -hmm. setup to pick out the logo, mm. for example. But I do believe that Gina played a part in, you know, taking that logo and really putting a personality yeah. behind it. Yeah. All right. So we're June 27, 2024. This is going to be fun. What are the services that Chorby offers today? So we offer like 30 plus different services, but they're really broken into six divisions. Mm -hmm. You've got your lawn care, which is fertilization and weed control. Uh, all things that take are, are taking care of the lawn, keeping the weeds out, keeping the grass healthy. So you've got lawn care. That's the one service line that Chorby has franchised. Mm -hmm. So we've got a franchisee that operates three territories doing about a half a million dollars a year in that division. Yeah, and of course, we'll then we've got our later. corporate ops. But we've got lawn care, we've got lawn mowing. Both of these are still our core bread and butter. Mm -hmm. And then we've got pest control, which we've done for about eight years now. It's our third largest service line. Uh, so pest control and termite that goes with that, and exclusions and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then we've got pools, which we have just launched in the last two years, less than two years, so we offer pool services. We've got plumbing, which we've launched in the last 18 months. And then we've got, um, the sixth one is what I will just broadly call landscapes, but the focus isn't so much so landscapes, mm -hmm. it's tree trimming, it's irrigation, and Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. So really those kind of three services fall into a broader term landscapes. Within landscapes enhancements. Do we do that? That's what I mean, landscapes. Landscapes okay. uh, will do anything from $2,500 enhancement, uh, where we're just freshening up a, mm -hmm. a dated landscape, all the way to twenty and $30,000 landscape jobs. Mm -hmm. But that said, those are almost fillers. Uh, the real focus in the landscapes department is establishing what will someday be their own individual divisions in mm -hmm. their own right, irrigation, sprinkler, repair and maintenance, tree and shrub, mm -hmm. which is both tree trimming uh, and, and also tree care. Yeah. So eventually landscapes will split into it, it, multiple different business, uh, business divisions in its own right. Yeah. So um, what is the next, outside of the irrigation trees and within landscaping, what's the next division that you see being established within the I have no Realistically. idea. Realistically. Right Realistically speaking, uh, we still offer on our website Handyworks, mm -hmm. and but but right now we don't have any internal Handy Handyworks work being done. Really, yeah. it's all just being referred out. So <laughs> I would definitely want to figure that one out. 
that one proved challenging, which is kind of why we backed off of it. It proved challenging in finding the skill sets to do it. There's so many different pieces of skill set or different skill sets needed in the handiworks d division. Give, give the services inside of a handiworks. Oh, geez. For us, it was anything from uh, hanging TVs to cleaning out garages to uh, doing light washing. bulbs and pressure washing and we kind of attempted window washing and junk removal kind Other of all cleaning. in there but but all of those different things could technically be other businesses uh, they proved challenging for us too challenging to, to mm -hmm. continue and so we've kind of backed off of them uh, I would say that's all low-hanging fruit though because it doesn't require any licensing mm -hmm. Uh, but at the same time, right now, I feel like that is way, way, way into the future, maybe to the point that it would be about acquiring a, an existing yeah. business and turning that business's, in, that business's systems and processes into our own and franchising it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're, uh, give the, the, the service area for Chorby. So Chorby services Greater Collin County, which is the county north of Dallas, Texas. It also, that's about, that's where 90% of its business is, is mm -hmm. Collin County or Collin County and some of the outlining zip codes that, that kind of bleed into Dallas mm -hmm. County and Denton County. But more broadly, it, it services Dallas, Fort Worth, Metroplex. Mm -hmm. It services at least half of Dallas County. Uh, it services all of, almost all of Collin County, Denton County mm -hmm. and Tarrant County. Yeah. Do you envision Chorby expanding beyond that geographical location? Yes, but through franchising. Yeah, specifically, and we'll, probably a long time from now as well. Yeah, well, give give the the macro vision of Chorby. So Chorby, uh, though it has its roots in lawn mowing, Chorby's long term vision is to really reinvent itself as a technology mm -hmm. and a franchise as a technology powered by franchising. Mm -hmm. So I envision Chorby uh, first building a technology that is really really dynamic for the skilled trades for people doing the service mm -hmm. that then becomes uh, kind of a platform and a, and, and a, and a uh, unique selling proposition for possible franchise entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that will franchise with us. Uh, but beyond that, we'll build a client facing application technology as uh, home automation becomes more and more prevalent and more and more in its prime. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could say once it hits critical mass where more than 10% of the masses are using it, mm -hmm we create a technology platform that makes it so convenient for homeowners to use Chorby's application to both communicate with all of the skilled trades that they need to maintain their home, mm -hmm. everything from lawn mowing to plumbing to housekeeping to pools to pest control. When there's a single app that is so convenient, think Amazon Prime for shopping. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, we use Amazon and buy stuff on Amazon every single day mm -hmm. because of its convenience factor. We wanna build an app that makes it so convenient that, that n when anything needs to be done in somebody's home, they automatically think about Chorby. Yeah. And of course we have franchisees there to support the client in whatever skilled trade it is that they need, whether it be junk removal or garage door repair mm -hmm. or the services we offer today. Yeah. So what is the unique aspect of the model of franchising with Chorby specifically? Uh, we will have one brand that will have shared clients. So think you're, a pet, you're passionate about pest control and you buy a franchise, we're in zip code right now, 75072. Uh, you buy a franchise where you own that zip code for pest control and you're passionate and you're building your business on the Chorby platform and under the Chorby name for pest control while somebody else in that same zip code, 75072, that's passionate about lawn care mm -hmm is building their lawn care business, but you guys are partnered. You're sharing clients, you're sharing a technology, you're sharing a, a management and a leadership team mm -hmm. that you're partnered with. That's the unique piece of that. Now there's negatives to that. A lot of people in the franchising world would actually tell you franchisees don't want that. And there's reason that franchisees don't want that. What if the pest control franchisee is a jerk and he's can't losing clients? Mm -hmm. So this is a really, really good idea, but time will tell how we actually execute it. And there is a lot of challenges that we, ha that's why we kind of joked at the beginning of this conversation, like we've got a long way to go when it comes mm -hmm. to the Chorby vision. This is a, a very, very ambitious vision that many have tried in one capacity or another, but almost nobody has, well, literally nobody has actually innovated in the way we're talking about innovating because it is that hard. 
Are you worried that you might be biting off more than you can yes, chew? Yes, every single day. And more and more and more as time goes on. The 100%. more you know, the less you know? Exactly. What keeps you going? Well, I mean, I'm committed to this, and what else am I going to do with my time? Like, seriously, I do look at it on a regular basis. I think, okay, I could, I could quit like a big baby. I could quit and take my marbles and go home, and I'd actually be all the richer for it. But what the hell am I going to do? Like, what am I going to do with my money, and what am I going to do with my time? And when I look at that, and when I start to really look at it, I'm doing what I would do with my money and what I would do with my time. That's, yeah. that's this. Yeah. This is what I love, for better or for worse. <laughs> <laughs> So the legacy that you want Trorby to have in the industry, how would you sum that up? Uh, again, I think I, the, the industry needs changed, and I say all home services need changed. It is far too inconvenient to be a homeowner that doesn't want to do anything. Yeah. Trust me, I know. I'm a homeowner, <laughs> and I don't want to do any of it. My dad's the opposite. My dad's a handyman. He, he can literally do anything and everything that comes to a home. He can gut and remodel it every 25 years, and he can do every bit of the maintenance that needs to be done in between that 20, 25 years. That's what, that's what working in a garage is like. You get a little bit Go of fun there. Keep going. But, uh, you, you know, you, you, I, I don't want to do anything in my house. Yeah. And it's too inconvenient for people like me to have to keep up with the pool guy, the lawn guy, the fertilization guy, because that's oftentimes two different things. You know, all of these different things, I want our legacy to be making it easier for the homeowner. Yes, it might be hard to find franchisees in the traditional sense. Uh, yes, it, that might be. And yes, there's a risk factor to, oh, well, you know, you got a pest control franchisee and a lawn care franchisee, and what if they don't like each other? There's all these problems with it. But at the end of the day, it comes down to what does the client want? Mm -hmm. The client, American homeowners are demanding this practically. It mm -hmm. just hasn't happened yet. Nobody's done it because it's expensive and hard. Mm -hmm. And I think the people that know how to do it aren't really knowledgeable and expertise in the skilled trades. And the people that are in the skilled trades aren't really knowledgeable on the technology that has mm -hmm. to be done to do it. And so it just hasn't happened yet. But somewhere, some, somewhere down the line, somebody's going to do this, whether it's Chorby or somebody else, because mm -hmm. it just makes too much sense to the end user, the client. Yeah. It's just a matter of time before somebody does it. What's Chorby's mission statement? conveniently add value and comfort to your property. So that is Torby's mission statement. We want to conveniently add value and comfort to your property. So that would literally mean a piece of property from the time it's a piece of dirt all the way to the time that it's a 40-year-old beautiful single-family home or a 40-year-old beautiful piece of class A commercial real estate or apartment complex. Like mm -hmm. to me, that, that's the, the, the beauty in the mission statement is, is that it's all aspects of property development yeah. and the life of the property. Yeah. Aside from talent, what do you think it's going to take to realize these dreams? For lots Corby? and lots of money. That's right. F money and resource capital that far beyond what I have and far beyond, frankly, what I can even understand at this point in my life. I don't even know what I don't know. Yeah. I know I don't know it. <laughs> but that's the beauty in the Chorby brand is, is it's got so much potential. It is a billion dollar idea. It's not easy though, because nothing that's, that's, that's could ever grow to that size is mm -hmm. gonna be easy. Yeah, so I asked without money or without talent first, because I think it's talent really that's gonna get. Talent will the bring foundation. the foundation. Yeah, because I don't believe that the funds are not available. Like right. when the idea is ready, when mm -hmm. the idea is good enough, when it is articulated well enough, mm -hmm there's always going to be resource. Yeah. Like I don't believe that there's some finite resource or that there's some lack. Like if money tends to find good ideas. Yeah. And if it's and when it's a good enough idea, money will find mm -hmm. it. But yes, the talent is a huge part in when that happens. So that's what I want to talk about. Talk to me about the evolution of the talent that has got you to where you're at right now and what you think you need for the next iteration. Well, I talked about that a little bit already. In my journey as an entrepreneur, we became weed extinguishers, very reactionary because I didn't understand leadership development and didn't understand people development. Well, from 2016 to 2019, we kind of figured that out. We figured out that leadership and development of people and talent was the key to our success. Mm -hmm. uh, empathy and not being so uh, uh, corporate matters a lot. 
And so we've, we've talked on that and we've, we've mm -hmm. developed that, but to get to the next level, we've got to, we've got to bring in people that know what we don't know, as I just mentioned, and most, most of that is on the technology side. Mm -hmm. Most of that is, well, technology and, and capital. Raising money, how to acquire businesses and how to make the right decisions in that, because I do think that that plays a part in our long-term vision as we expand into new divisions. Mm -hmm. I don't want to start new divisions from, from zero. Scratch, yeah. I want to acquire those new divisions, uh, s put our culture into them, put our s systems and processes into them, and then franchise them. Mm -hmm. But that's going to require a whole new level of talent on a lot of fronts. Yeah. The culture is something that stood out to me immediately about Torby and, and all of the other brands. How would you define the culture that drives every day here? Well, I would actually ask you that question. I'm, I'm more biased uh, being the co-founder of, of much of this. Uh, I've got a, a much more biased view, but so I would, in a lot of ways, I would turn that around to you. So there's this element of constant drive towards improvement with a huge injection of humility. And so there's not ego at play that stops progress from happening. It's always about what's best for the team, what's best for our clients. And you have this mix of servant-hearted leaders and really smart people. And with that drive, with that humility, you just constantly drive forward. And so you blow past problems and because problems are always going to be there. Mm -hmm but you have a really incredible level of talent with these people that keep this culture just going. That's well said. Outside of funding, outside of talent, is there any other major threat to Chorby? Well, yeah, the model itself. Mm -hmm. The model itself. Being complex. The complexity of it. Yeah. And, and again, we've had to restructure our business twice in five years between insurance issues mm -hmm. that we didn't know about. You know, one. One insurance company wants to insure, wants to specialize in lawn care, but mm -hmm. the moment we tell them we do Christmas lights or that we get into trees and climb trees, they suddenly really don't like our business yeah. model. And so we had to restructure. Well, as soon as we restructured it, it all changed by the time we restructured it. Yeah. Um, and so there's the, the business, the, the model in general. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the franchising aspect. On one hand, it could absolutely disrupt franchising in a lot mm -hmm. of ways uh, because it's a single name. That's, that they may have 15 or even 25 different opportunities within a single name, yeah. whether it be housekeeping, lawn care, garage door repair, whatever, it yeah. could be 25 different things. That model, if you talk to industry, uh, seasoned industry executives in the franchising, on one hand, they look at it and say, oh, it's a great idea. On the other hand, they can tell you a million different reasons as to why franchisees don't like this. Mm -hmm. My answer back to that is, it's not about what the franchisees like. They're not the right franchisees if they don't like it. Mm -hmm. It's about, at the end of the day, what does the client, what does the end user find convenient? Going yeah. back to our mission statement, conveniently adding value and comfort to your property. I'm confident we'll find franchisees mm -hmm. if we build a proper if we build a proper uh, technology that's client facing and if we build a proper technology that's, uh, that's geared towards the person delivering the service, the franchisees will be there. About finding the right franchisees, that's kind of the point of the Pet Waste Millionaire brand. Yes, we wanna have a very intimate uh, experience in picking our franchisee. Mm -hmm. The current world of franchising is very much so outsource all of that outsource your franchise development bring get get other people to bring the leads mm -hmm. um we want to outsource that yes to that way's millionaire but that's still within our own ecosystem yeah and and again i do believe that the way we will grow chorby with with franchisees will be very different than the traditional way of going and finding franchisees thank you ej appreciate you talking about chorby I've looked forward to the next next many years. Thank you, Ben. I look forward to you being right alongside me, putting all that work in. Yay.